It's summertime. This means barbecues, long light evenings, and unfortunately for indoor gardeners, a plethora of plant wrecking pests on the loose. Rising temperatures bring out the bugs by the bucket load. Without adequate preparation, your precious plants could fall foul to unwanted visitors and ultimately perish. Integrated Pest Management, or IPM for short, stresses the importance of being proactive when it comes to insects. First, you must try and prevent attacks, then monitor for issues, and hopefully only interfere as a last resort. Natural predators, simple traps, and soft insecticides, such as organic, oil-based, and soap-based products, are all key to this approach. Before we go on, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel to help us share more growing tips and tricks. Right then, what kind of pests might you encounter in your grow room and how do they make themselves known? Spider mites are arguably the most feared of all grow room pests, but they can easily be fought. Search for small yellow speckles on the top surface of leaves, a surefire sign of feeding. The undersides of leaves may also contain tiny white dots that are either the mites or their eggs. Webbing occurs in the latter stages of an infestation. By far the best form of prevention and early treatment involves spider mite predators. These little guys are the natural hunters of spider mites, coming in sachets that you attach to plants or places nearby as a preventative measure, and bottles that you scatter the contents of around your room before leaving at the base of plants to deal with the beginning of an outbreak. Once they've run out of prey, the predators naturally die off, leaving your plants completely unharmed. For more serious issues, revert to a powerful spray like Plant Vitality Killer Mite, and then consider fumigating with a smoke bomb between crops. Next up, we've got thrips, also known by the trendier name of thunderflies. Thrips are on average 2mm in length and have two pairs of wings. However, it's the larvae that actually cause the headaches. They feed by rasping the leaf surface, leading to distorted growth and loss of colour. Telltale signs that you've got thrip larvae in the vicinity are silvery grey trails along the tops of your leaves and small black deposits, being their waste. Remove the infected leaves. We offer several types of predator and spray concentrate for thrips, including pyrethrum 5EC, plus the excellent agrothrin dusting powder. You should also be on the hunt for fungus gnats, often referred to as sirid flies. The small sluggish black flies are common and relatively harmless in traditional open gardens. For indoor grow rooms though, they'll remain focused on your sealed off plants, unleashing their larvae to cause havoc in the root zone. The little blighters typically consume dead root mass, but if you've got young cuttings or seedlings, they'll eat the soft fresh roots, significantly stunting growth and potentially killing your plants before they have the chance to develop. Lowering your humidity and growing media water level helps defeat the pest, as does the addition of nematodes and yellow sticky traps. Another direct preventative measure for fungus gnats is lava light -like no-gnats. Layer this stuff around the base of your plants to stop the fungus gnat life cycle and naturally have the flies and larvae die off. Moving on, another bug to be aware of is leaf miner. These pesky nuisances live their lives inside the leaves upon which they feed, so you won't see them, only their impact upon your plant. Watch out for foliar damage, such as discoloration and general imperfections. A good spray of pyrethrum 5EC typically works well, and previously harmed leaves should fully recover. Finally, let's talk about aphids. Baby making machines that are pear shaped with yellow, green, brown, or black bodies, causing them to occasionally be called green fly and black fly. Given the opportunity, they'll feed on your plants and leave behind honeydew waste, capable of triggering mold. Whilst ladybirds are the natural predator of aphids, we offer pest control products specifically designed to destroy them in the quickest and most efficient manner. Again, pyrethrum 5EC immediately springs to mind. Always cut off the most affected parts, including any new flowering sites that have been decimated. Now, as any prudent grower will tell you, the best way to deal with pests is to undertake preventative measures before the threat of invasion exists. You'll often find the associated products are cheaper than those required to actually overcome an infestation. We've already mentioned spider mite sachets as a way of reducing the threat of an attack with live predators. Use them from the cuttings and seedlings stage inside your propagator and replace every three to four weeks. The same can be said about thrips and thrip predators too. For root zone pests like fungus gnat larvae, choose nematodes. This is another example of a natural option. Just mix them with water and pour into the root zone replenishing every six to eight weeks. Foliar applications can be administered too, 
they'll ward off the bad guys, or reduce their numbers if the population has grown of late. We recommend placing a bug blocker on any intake fan, or intake ducting being used. This mesh covering is available in many different sizes, and features a drawstring enabling it to fit snugly where required, sealing off an often exploited route into your grow space. Annoyingly, pests can sneakily enter into your grow room via clothing. If you've been to someone else's setup, or a grow shop or garden center, apply caution and either change what's being worn or put on a protective overall. It may seem a bit OTT, but the extra faff might just save you one day. Similarly, be wary of using other people's cuttings and cheap media and soil mixes, since these could both conceal bugs. The most obvious method for prevention is simply to clean the grow space on a regular basis, with Silver Bullet Mist deserving recognition here. A tent or room frequently scrubbed down using this sterilizing agent is much less likely to experience an issue than a tent or room left unloved and covered with plant debris that can hide and incubate pests. Aim for a thorough clean between crops at a bare minimum. Also, think about deploying a smoke bomb during this time to ensure that anything living is exterminated. Despite adopting measures to keep bugs out of your room, on occasion they will still find a way in. How then do you identify the early signs of an invasion before it becomes a full infestation? Sticky traps are your first stop. You can hang them from the ceiling and tent frames, or place them around the base of your plants. These are a great early warning system for bigger problems on the horizon, whilst also serving to catch and kill pests, and should therefore be considered essential. Around one sticky trap per plant normally does the trick. On top of this, always carry a pocket magnifier and conduct a five day bug check. Not every unwanted visitor will fall victim to a trap, meaning you need to stay vigilant. Okay, for a minute or two, we need to pretend you've discovered pests in your grow room, they've managed to dodge past your defenses, and obviously it's time to interfere. Applying pesticides, organic or otherwise, should always be a last resort. The previously outlined steps will hopefully save you from this scenario. In terms of the options available at this stage, we advise that you pick the versatile Pyrethrum 5EC, a naturally occurring insecticide derived from chrysanthemum flowers and suitable for edible plants. It proves to be very good against spider mites, aphids, leaf miner, and thrips, plus many other common pests. Mix at 1 to 2 mil per litre initially, and build up over time, spraying onto your plants and ensuring complete coverage. Remove any webbing before tackling a spider mite infestation. Plant Vitality Killer Mite is another spray concentrate. It's extremely powerful and with a full pesticide approval license. Potent, fast acting, and designed to wipe out spider mites, leaf miners, and thrips, this product really doesn't mess around. Just avoid using it during flowering. Combine your chosen pesticide with a decent sprayer. It's ready for action, having been purchased prior to an outbreak. Our Aqualine range won't let you down. Always apply just before lights off. Please note that as effective as they can be, pest destroying spray concentrates aren't 100% guaranteed to work, especially if the plants have been completely overrun by insect invaders. Of course, other options exist, we've simply highlighted our favorites and those covering most bases. Furthermore, new treatments continue to emerge all the time, so it's definitely worth speaking to us to learn more. The key point to take home from this video is the fundamentals of integrated pest management to prevent, to monitor, and then to interfere. Put the right amount of effort into preventing attacks and monitoring your plants for pests, and you won't need to think about interfering. However, you can be rest assured that treatments are available if you're unfortunate enough to suffer an outbreak. Got any questions? Leave a comment below and we'll do our best to help. Give the video a like if you found it helpful, and subscribe to our channel for more growing content.